Welcome to Discovering. Tonight, we're back on the hard water, this time with the ladies from Wisconsin Women Fish. Up it up a notch is what we're calling it this year. And having more advanced educational opportunities to give to them. And Richard P. Smith has tips on finding shed antlers. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Once a winter, I meet up with the Wisconsin Women Fish and Women on Ice group for a day or two on the ice here in the UP. Welcome to the UP, man. Isn't it just absolutely gorgeous? The UP offers such great angling opportunities, you know, and there's not a lot of pressure. You know, you go to some of the other lakes near metro areas or like even Lake of the Woods or Red Lake or a lot of these you know, really primo ice fishing destinations. I think the UP has just as much to offer with none of the people. Led by UP native Barb Carey, the club is comprised of women from all over the country who share a passion for fishing. Called Wisconsin Women Fish, but we have women from 22 states in Canada. On this particular weekend, they were fishing some small lakes in Iron County. This particular Wisconsin Women Fish event, we're working on uh, skill building finding fish. You guys have been honing your skills for a long time now. Everyone's rigged out. You got all these fancy ATVs and snowmobiles and all the safety gear. And we want you to be able to go wherever you want, whatever lake, and find some fish. We're trying to just really give these people that have already made the investment in learning the basics, to up it up a notch. And that's gonna be our theme going into 2024. So our plan for fishing today is this morning, we're gonna look for perch on the weed lines, just off the weed lines. We're gonna check some uh, humps for walleye. But now I'm like right at the bottom and kind of tossing up and see if any fish will find me. Oh, it just got off. Oh, no. Try it again, get yep. down there. And then uh, about this afternoon, about two, three o'clock, we're gonna come over and set up on this rocky point for the burbot and walleye bite. Barb is committed to teaching women how to fish. It's pretty much all she does. And it's not just learning how to find and catch fish. She's teaching ice safety, preparedness. You know, it's always a challenge with ice fishing and one of the things that happens at many of our events is that there's some type of weather incident. There's, um, you know, some type, somebody's wheel bearings went out. And so we're constantly overcoming these obstacles that just get in the way of having fun outside with a lot of toys. And to be able to solve any problem that comes up just on our own, is really empowering for them. I know last year we got caught, or last weekend on group number one, we got caught in a blizzard and three or four gals got stuck in the parking lot because they don't plow it. So we had the tow straps and this and that, and it, but that's part of the adventure too. You know, it's part of the fun. And, you know, we're 
fishing bodies of water that have no development around them. It's all just trees and eagles and wildlife. And you're not going to get a beautiful back, more beautiful backdrop than the UP, that's for sure. See how frozen this is. <laughs> Even though the fish didn't cooperate, none of the ladies gave up. They spent eight hours on the ice honing their skills, hanging out, and enjoying a cold winter day here in the UP. We'll see what happens. Hopefully the night bite's better than the day bite was. Ah, I caught two northern small little ones. Oh, that's all. I'm tip-ups. That's some action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put it down and put the flag on there. All of a sudden, zip, it just took off. And I'm like, boy, I think I got one. Perfect. Got him. Sailing on the water. Right? <laughs> Come on, buddy. There we go. We did finish the night with one big fish that I have never seen before and is on my bucket list to catch. You gotta just grab the fish. It's up in the hole, up in the hole. Ooh, it's a big one. Nice one. <laughs> Holy smokes. That is awesome. We awesome. are eating good tonight, that's for sure. We are. Good job. That's what we got the walleyes jigging up the other night. It's uh, that dots on there, Wonder Bread chartreuse. That is a nice one. I think that's the kind, the one we saw, size of the one we saw in our Mega Live. So You'd come up and grab it. Yeah, it hits hard, you know, and then it kept taking drag out. I knew it was a big fish and I figured it was a burbot. It just had that uh, fight to it but they're absolutely delicious. We cooked up a couple the other night and it's just like lobster. How are they to clean, Ricky? You're the one that cleaned them. Oh, they're easy. What's the trick? Just like you're cutting the back straps off a deer. Right here, go behind the head. And you just want this chunk of meat right here. You wanna stay above the ribs because there's an oil sac in there and you don't wanna puncture that. And it's just beautiful white meat and you cube it up and boil it in Sprite for a few minutes. Yeah. Dip it in butter, it's delicious. As I mentioned, this isn't the first time I've met up with this group. Since the fish were tight-lipped this year, here's a look back at another really fun day on the ice. Chasing those dinner plate sized bluegills. We've already uh, scouted out a few of them here so that we're pretty excited about that. And then we're gonna be chasing some slab crappies as well. These women know what they're doing. I watch them unload snowmobiles, ATVs, fishing shelters, and haul them on the ice, set up, and go to town catching fish. This is a kind of a, on the smaller sides for some of the crappies we're looking for, but it's definitely a good start. Um, they're so beautiful. They have that golden color with the stained water of the Michigami Reservoir. Got that on a dead stick. Now I put the flasher in the hole. What we're doing here, what we're teaching the students, is to find fish. So we're going around with the Vexlars and seeing if we're marking any fish. And we're searching with an active search bait. Well, I did that in this hole and I saw a fish, but it didn't take the search bait. So I left a dead stick minnow here while I went to check the rest of the holes and sure enough, got a fish on it. So that particular fish right there bit on a rosy, which is one of these gold minnows. So this stained water Orange is a good color, so I, a lot of times I, lose, I use uh, orange hooks or orange jigs. And you can hook the minnow either under the dorsal fin, and you just barely want to grab any skin because you want that minnow to be active. So now, I just send it down, and I'm going to check where it's going with this rex. I can see activity here on the bottom. A lot of times those crappies are suspended. I'm always gonna fish the highest fish I see first. So how this works is I just put this right in here 
and um, adjust it exactly where I want. This is a little frozen. And then this uh, line, you just take the line and put it under this little lever. And then you hook this flag. It's a very simple mechanism, so nothing really can go wrong on it. And now when the fish takes the line, it just flips that trigger up and the flag goes up. But then you can come over and you can reel it up on the um, jig rod instead of a tip up. And so that's always fun. We know that the fish are here, we're in the right spot. It's just a matter of fine tuning and getting the new students to each have that discovering moment. What's the biggest crappie you ever caught? Uh, this one. That one? <laughs> I was hoping to learn the vexlar and how to go on to a lake and figure out where to go. So that's that's what I've been learning and taking in a lot. When they found the fish, it seemed like they were pulling 10 to 14 inch crappies out of the ice left and right. Nice. A little loving, maybe. And bluegills. I have never seen a 10 inch bluegill before this weekend. And now I've seen, I don't know how many. That's awesome. Yeah, here's a fun one. Go, I pounded on the bottom and he said, I'm coming. Eh, no, it's a throwback crappie, but it's a fish. Just a little, a little okay. jig. Okay. All by itself. First time fishing here? Yeah. I can see why people come all the way up here though. Beautiful. Is that your biggest now? I think so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Got a new record. <laughs> this is 10 and 3 quarters. Look how beautiful those are. Just amazing. This, these are the biggest bluegills I've ever seen. This kind of weather, sometimes it pays to just wait them out. You know, we're just kind of hunkered down in our shacks and uh, it's snowing like crazy and fish are showing up regularly though. Not hot and heavy, but when you catch them, they're dandies. Holy smokes, how big is that thing? I have no idea. 14 and three quarters. No, put the head towards me. Later, after catching that personal record, Jenna also <laughs> caught the littlest fish on camera. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Hi, baby. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on. He's there. Um, so it was either like a drop check with a uh, Here we go. Come on. Mm. Mm. Yep. Woo! There he is. That's a little bigger one. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> More and more women are joining. We have women from 20 states and two Canadian provinces, and our membership is close to 500. And the women get so much support. They can ask questions about fishing. They can learn from each other. You know, it's about growing the sport, inviting women to participate, and they're having a blast. <laughs> what you think you know about fishing is a lot, and then you attend Barb's classes, and then you go, Oh, there's a lot more to learn, so she's helped a lot with technique and helping get a lot of um, quality equipment, so it's been awesome. Got a lot of good friends, a lot of really good friends from the club, like a second family. My my forte is rattle reels, um, tip ups, tip downs, yeah. nothing like seeing that go and then you just tip, take off running. <laughs> Why does it always happen to me? Oh yes! Oh my God. Ah! Ah! 10, 10, 10! 10! 99% of my fishing is catch and release, but I just I just love the thrill of chasing blanks. I bet it's a crappie! 
Oh my god. Holy oh, oh, smoke! Oh, it's a crappie. Oh, 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 wow! Oh, 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 oh. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know, if you learn to chase those down, there'll be no stopping you, man. This is why the UP is the greatest place on earth. Look at that. A big thing that the ladies from Wisconsin Women Fish teach is CPR. Catch, photo, release. Make sure they have their bearings a little bit before we let them go. Especially when it's cold like this. Oh, ho, ho, there it goes. Really, really important. And that's kind of a difference. You know, you, I love to harvest fish too, but there's some that you really should let go if you want our kids and our grandkids to be able to catch fish like this. Really important. Here's a matched set of antlers uh, shed by an eight point buck. Uh, a lot of people would be lucky to find a matched set of antlers like this, but I found the best way to get shed antlers is to be with the buck when he sheds them, as I was when this guy shed his antlers. It was shed by a three and a half year old eight point buck that I've known since he's a fawn. I started walking with his mother and then he got used to me and I started walking with him. So I happened to be with this buck, particular buck when he lost these antlers. He had, he had actually lost one antler when I hooked up with him on February 2nd. Here's what the buck looked like during the fall with his antlers intact. When I was looking for the buck on February 2nd, I found his right antler first that he had already shed. A short time later, I came across the buck as he was chasing a doe with his left antler still intact. The buck couldn't have lost his right antler much before my arrival because his pedestal was still bloody where the antler fell off. After spending about an hour with the one antlered buck, I filmed him as he followed a doe and fawn away from me. And then when he was just barely out of sight, he stopped and stood there for quite a few minutes. The buck eventually turned and came back toward me. And when he did, I suddenly saw his left antler was missing. And he was moving his head in a strange fashion, as shown here, like losing the antlers hurt a little bit, or he was having difficulty getting used to not having the antlers on his head, as you can see here. I went back to where the buck had been standing for a few minutes and turned back toward me and sure enough, there was his left antler where he lost it. Not long after the buck lost his left antler, I filmed him as he fed on a windblown balsam fir tree. After the buck was done feeding, he went a short distance away, pawed snow out of the way for a bed and laid down. Here's a close-up of that left pedestal uh, where he lost his second antler. By the following day, the blood had dried up and the pedestal started to heal. Richard is always out hunting deer with his camera, so he's around them quite a bit. For those of us who don't have deer in our backyard to follow around, I asked Richard for some tips on finding antler sheds. Anywhere where deer are concentrated in a logging operation that concentrates deer, walking those trails leading away from those cuttings is an excellent way to find antlers. And sometimes when deer are feeding on tops of trees that are dropped, they'll catch their antler on a branch and they'll drop off next to a fallen tree where they're feeding. Uh, following those major trails to bedding areas, check beds. Sometimes when deer are bedded, uh, they all lose their antlers when they're bedded. Uh, those are the main things. I've, one time I saw a buck with bloody pedestals that had just lost his antlers. Uh, so I backtracked him, I followed his tracks in the snow back to his bed and I found one of his antlers at his bed. So when is the best time to go out shed hunting? Those that are run down because of the rut or injured they tend to lose them first, like in December, early January, uh, all the way through January into February, bucks will shed their antlers. Because of the 
mild start to winter this year. Some of our bucks may hold their antlers into late February or even March if they're in good condition. Uh, but most of them, by February, there should be a lot of bucks will have lost their antlers. That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. <laughs>